Here's the deal. I know you not told me not to tell you, brother, but I told you, brother. Me and him are both going to take you to the knock shop tomorrow, mate. But you can't have full sex. You can only have a blowjob. And Dan went, I want full sex. And his brother Andrew went, Dan, you're in no position to argue with anyone ever. <laughs> then Dan reluctantly agreed. Now, prostitution in Australia is legal. So I spent the rest of the afternoon going through the phone book trying to find a brothel with wheelchair access. <laughs> Best afternoon ever! <laughs> Four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother... Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Flavor. The flavor today is Jim Jeffries taking a muscular dystrophy sufferer to see a prostitute. <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for any future videos. So, without any further ado, let's take a look at Jim Jeffries taking a muscular dystrophy sufferer to see a prostitute. <laughs> Bring in the alcohol. How many more do you reckon there is behind there? <laughs> There's a dwarf behind there mixing me a cocktail. <laughs> drinks, I drinks. am fucking drunk now. <laughs> All right. I'm going to tell you a story. This story is very long. The first three minutes of this story are very depressing. Just hitching up the pants. It's the pants. First three minutes of this story are very depressing, but there is a moment where this story takes flight. And you have to hang in there with me until this moment and trust me that the story is going to get good. Good. I grew up at number three, Taramara Street. At number five was my two best childhood friends, Andrew and Daniel Connor. Daniel was born with a disease called muscular dystrophy. If you don't know what muscular dystrophy is, it's a horrible disease that wastes away at your muscles. It's the same as Lou Gehrig's disease or motor neurone disease, except you're born with it. You get diagnosed when you're about six years old, when you're not walking right, and they put you on crutches. By the time you're 10, you're in a wheelchair. By the time you're 20, you're in a completely vegetated state. Most people die before their 25th birthday. Dan's lived to be 33 years old, still alive and kicking. Still alive. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> still alive. <laughs> He's actually died seven times in his life and been resuscitated seven. And I once asked him, I said, Dan, what happens after you die? And he said, nothing. <laughs> so good luck with your religion and your faith. Uh, yeah. Faith. I'll take an actual statistic. <laughs> statistic, eh? Statistic. Now, his family had since moved to Melbourne. I had moved to the Great Britain. I went to do the Melbourne Comedy Festival. This is about a year ago. Uh, I hadn't seen him in all that time. His brother Andrew came to see my show. And then Andrew took me to see Dan. And I went in to see him. And I'd never seen anyone live this long with his disease. And he's laying on a bed. His eyelids are a muscle that he can't keep open anymore. And they're just... He's just squinting through these little things. And wow. He has a breathing mask on him to keep his lungs working because the lungs are a muscle that he can't keep pumping. He has a, a, a heart monitoring machine in case he flat lines in the middle of the night and someone has to resuscitate him. Wow. And as soon as I walked in and saw this guy that I used to run around with as a child, I burst into tears. There's nothing worse you can give anyone in this world than pity, you know? I went in the corridor, I felt like a right prick and I was fucking wiping my eyes off. And I went back in and I sat with Dan. His brother Andrew went off to work. And me and Dan chatted for a while. 20 minutes into the conversation, Dan says to me, Jim, I'm 32 years old. I've never been with a woman. Will you take me to a prostitute? And that's where the story picks up, ladies and gentlemen. And that's where the story picks up. I went, fuck yeah. <laughs> And he went, but don't tell my brother, he wouldn't understand. I said, that's where you're wrong. 
I've known your brother my entire life. Trust me, he will understand. And again, stands well, when Andrew came home from work, I pulled Andrew aside and said, Andrew, look, here's the deal. Dan's asked me to take him to a prostitute. I'm going to do it whether you like it or not, but I think as his brother, he should come along and help out. And Andrew went, we're not doing it. And I went, why? And he went, it'll kill him. And I went, <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. I got nothing. I got nothing. Listen. He's going to die soon anyway. This is a good oh, way God. for him to go. Like, sure, we'll have to answer a few questions. A few questions to the investigators. And he said, we're not doing it. And I said, why? And he goes, because mum doesn't like you already. Aye, 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 and I aye. went, your mum's never liked me. That's why I'm the right guy to kill your brother. <laughs> good point. It's a good point. It's a good point. And he said, all right, we'll do it. But he can't have full sex. Full sex will kill him. He can only have a blowjob. And I thought that was fairly reasonable. <laughs> so we went back in and saw Dan. He was where we left him. And we said... <laughs> he was where we left him. You think? You think? Dan, here's the deal. I know you not told me not to tell your brother, but I told you, brother. Me and him are both going to take you to the knock shop tomorrow, mate. But you can't have full sex. You can only have a blowjob. And Dan went, I want full sex. And his brother Andrew went, Dan! You're in no position to argue with anyone ever. <laughs> then Dan reluctantly agreed. Now, prostitution in Australia is legal. So I spent the rest of the afternoon going through the phone book trying to find a brothel with wheelchair access. <laughs> Best afternoon ever. <laughs> Hold up. Wait a minute. Bring it back. <laughs> imagine that? You imagine having a friend that you grew up with and having muscular dystrophy and that happening and then him asking you this one thing? Don't tell my brother. And you know you have to tell your brother. You know, because shit. You know, shit goes down, shit goes wrong and it goes left. That family's gonna sue you like it's going out of style. So you know you have to tell your brother. The brother has to be if the brother's not in on it, in, in with it, <laughs> he can't do it. Okay, not full sex, but just a blowjob. Oh boy. And then looking around. I didn't even know in Australia it was uh, legal. Brothel wise, that it was legal. But uh, <laughs> you're in no position to argue with anyone ever. <laughs> oh God. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine. I could not imagine. But he was in it. He was in for it. He was in for it all 20. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get this. So when the story picks up, anyway, let's let's get back. Let's get back. <laughs> Eventually, I found one—the biggest brothel in the southern hemisphere, the Daily Planet, or as the Australians call it, Four Floors of Whores. <laughs> it's a 24-hour brothel because Australia is a go-ahead country. Of whores. So we decided we were going to go early in the morning, like real early, like 6 a.m. We wanted to go when the place was quiet and we weren't going to cause a scene. So we wake him up at 6 o'clock in the morning. It's hard to tell if he's awake. And <laughs> we get him in his chair. Now, he hasn't got your bog standard fucking wheelchair. He's got one of those big sort of silver looking things with the truck tires on it. I think the model's called a Hawking. And even though his muscles don't work, they get sore. So this thing can move him from side to side and back to front and even into a full bed. So we get him in the chair, then we order a taxi. And then it's not like you have black cabs out there. It's like a normal car, but they've, they've modified the back to go higher. And they drive him up through the boot and they strap him in there. Right. And he sits up high with windows all around him like a big retarded pope. <laughs> or as the Catholics would say, the pope. <laughs> and we drive off to the brothel. Now when we get to the brothel, it takes 10 minutes to get him off the taxi. I see this as my wow. window of opportunity. So while they're getting him off the taxi, I run into the brothel. Now there's two ways that brothels work. Either the prostitutes will stand in a row in their lingerie and you just pick the one that you want. Or 
They'll stand around in a bar in evening gowns and high heels and you walk up to the one that you like the look of, chat to her for a bit, act like you've got some type of connection with an Eastern European woman, then take her upstairs and fuck her if you need your life to be this delusional. So on that note, that is part one. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll come back to do part two and resume where this story left off. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for any future videos. What he's going to tell these prostitutes <laughs> and warm them up, or what they're about to get, and what they're about to expect. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for any future videos. Until next time. <laughs> I can't wait. This is.